Hey, what is going on everybody? It is David Palmer and Leo King and it is Tuesday, December the 12th of 2017. 12-12, 2017. Hope everybody's doing wonderful out there. Thanks so much for being here and being part of my live weekly show. And you know, this is where I go over what's going on in the cosmos and be your cosmic guide to tell you what's happening, what I feel, what I'm channeling for you and what intuitively I can do to help you translate what's going on in the universe, how to help you understand what's happening. You know, this has been a, a very powerful time. It's been a very powerful moment in time. You know, th this is just, if you, if you were to like look at a calendar and, and kind of make it like a hot spot, I mean, you could look at the whole year 2017. You could look at the whole year 2016. I mean, you could really look at ever since the whole 2012 alignment. And you know, there's a lot that's coming to an end here, which is uh, what I would like to say, the end of a major five-year cycle. I mean, if we look at ourselves five years ago now, we had just entered Saturn in Scorpio. Uh, we were literally just moving into getting prepared for the galactic shift of December 21st, 2012. I mean, we were a week away. Right. So it's interesting that we are coming into that similar energy source again. Saturn's about to move signs into a new one next week. We will have December 21st here in about a week, right? About a week and a half. So at the same time that Saturn's moving into a new sign, we're having a, a big December 21st. And this December 21st is no joke. This December 21st of 2017 has a lot happening. So we're going to go over some of this stuff. Now we're going to talk mainly about this week, which is going to be going over so much of what's happening in the Sagittarian vibe, so much of what's happening with Mercury retrograde, so much of what's happening with Saturn and the last bit of it being in Sagittarius. So there's quite a lot to talk about just in this week. Of course, in my all honesty, I'd love to go into next week because next week is like the, the, the holy of all weeks, right? And, 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 and what's happening in the cosmos and what's happening. You know, it's like next week's the big deal. But this week's just as big too. And, and you really got to pay attention to it or you really got to, you know, be part of it. So let's take a look at where the astro, you know, all this, this you know, stuff is today. Everybody's doing, well, is he going to talk about that term that he won't speak of? Uh, for a while, I'm not going to speak the term, thou shall not, I don't want to speak. We'll just put it that way. So we got a lot going on. Um, so I'm running the chart for December 13th, okay? And um, what are we looking at? Well, let's see. The main thing here is this Saturn, okay? Saturn, at the very end of Sagittarius, it's literally on the last degree, right? The last degree. Now, the 29th degree is always the critical degree, okay? So it's the critical degree. It always brings uh, finishing touches. You know, it's almost like last minute effort to slam things in because you got to think of it uh, from, a, from a universal level. You got to think of the last degree as like the last chance before the door closes and a new door opens to a new space. So there's a lot when it comes to a new door opening, but it's also like finishing up a lot of things, trying to slam as much as you can in and talk about slamming as much as you can in. You got the planet Mars, right? That's entered back home into Scorpio. Woo! Talk about, you know, ramming things as fast as you can, getting things done, wanting to move forward in life, wanting to get that edge on things, wanting that passion. You know, Mars and Scorpio is passionate. It definitely does not take no for an answer. You know, if it wants to do it, it wants to do it. And when you combine this aspect with all this Sagittarius, the Sun and Mercury have just made their conjunction. So what does that mean? We'll take a look at this individually here. Hold on, let's throw that off. So let's take a look at this Sun Mercury. We've got the Sun and Mercury, which Mercury's in retrograde, right? Here it is in red, just passed over the Sun. It's a moment of clarity. It's also a moment that the universe has been giving us a message that we need to pay attention to. Now, this happened on Tuesday the 12th, 1212, which I'm actually talking to you today, okay? So in 1212, 2017, Mercury and the Sun made a conjunction and Mercury retrograde finally had its moment because you got to think of it like this, okay? 
So let's say here's the sun and Mercury goes past the sun. Now this is from a Earth perspective. This isn't what actually goes on in the, the cosmos. I'm just going to say that. So from an astrology perspective, right? So here comes Mercury, right? Well, if Mercury were to keep going, we'd lose our heads, right? Because our soul is our sun, our identity of soul, sun. And eventually, if Mercury just kept flying forward, we would lose ourselves in our head. It's always good for our mind to stop. That's what a retrograde is and come back and have this, have this moment of a reflection, or it's almost like a, a different look on life. Now, this is all happening in Sagittarius. This is all happening in a sign that deals with our future, which deals with our, you know, ethical lines of our, you know, what we believe in, what we deal with our higher mind, what we've learned, teaching aspects. But even deeper than that, it's expansion. It's what we want to to search for in our life, where we want to go. It's the adventure of life. And there's a lot that the message of, of the universe has kind of come through of like what our future should be focused on, where we should go in our life. A lot of that is coming up with this Mercury and Sun conjunction. What's going to be interesting to me is this Mercury-Venus conjunction happening this week, which we will talk about, which I'll pull up in the next chart. But coming into this week and coming into this energy, it's the end of the Sagittarian vibe, especially because of the fact that Saturn is at the last degree and the sun on December 21st, right? Actually, it's like, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're literally about a week away from this whole entire Sagittarius of the sun ending and Venus is hot tailing as fast as it can also to meet up with the sun soon. So, you know, it's like there's a lot of uh, things to pay attention to when it comes to this, uh, everything's trying to move out, okay? Everything's trying to move. If you look at this, I mean, literally moving out, pushing the future, looking, ramming things home with that Mars and Scorpio aspect that I talked about. There's a lot that things are trying to get really, you know, intense, really quick here. And I think it's actually very positive. I don't think it's negative. I think that the energy levels, yes, they are intense, okay? So I'm not saying like, no, the energy is not intense. Like it's intense, but it's manageable. One thing about this energy now that Mars has entered Scorpio and the fact that we also have Venus and Sagittarius, this detriment energy that we were dealing with all through November, all through November were three planets detriment. I mean, not fun at all. And coming into December, I mean, literally it was like, uh, it was kind of like very difficult to get through life. You know, I'll be real with you for, for weeks on weeks on weeks. Now that Mars has entered Scorpio, now that there's this positive energy of Sagittarius and the future here and this knowing that there's this portal opening to a whole new cycle. And this goes back to what I said at the very beginning of this video, which is we're ending a five year cycle. I mean, we literally are. We are ending where we were at five years ago with the galactic shift point. We are ending where, you know, uh, into a uh, Saturn and Sagittarius and a lot of the energy that was karmically connected to the Saturn and Scorpio energy. It's not that it's all fully there, but like 99% of that stuff's done. The last thing that's got to happen here in Scorpio is the Jupiter retrograde that's coming in the, the, the late winter and early spring. And then the Venus retrograde in Scorpio, which is coming at the end of 2018. And then the Scorpio energy is pretty much here done. You're not going to be seeing no major retrogrades. The same thing with the Libra energy. Venus is going to go retrograde at the you know, end of 2018 and go through Libra as well. So a lot of the energy sources that have been more negative, that have been more difficult, that have been more you know, spiritually, esoterically challenging to us, I don't want to be the first one to be kind of like a pollster on Fox News or on CNN or something and predict, like, listen, your troubles are over or anything, because that's the last thing I'm saying, is that a lot of the struggles that you've gone through and the stories of those struggles that you've gone through are coming to an end here. There's a whole new set of challenges coming. There's a whole new set of lessons coming. There's a whole new set of, you know, where these evolutionary aspects are happening and where are they happening? Well, a lot of them are going to be happening in the sign of Capricorn. A lot of them are going to be happening in the sign of Aquarius. We can talk about that if... Well, I actually do do a big video that I just did on that. Oh, but a lot of them are coming in this Capricorn area, right? I mean, this is where the big party's coming. Capricorn. And wherever Capricorn lies in your chart, wherever Capricorn lies for your sun sign, wherever Capricorn lies in any of the planets that you got. So there's a lot that's moving into new chapters. Um, there's going to be, of course, 
Some things that are also going to be Sagittarius bound because of the fact that in the end of 2018, we will have Jupiter enter into Sagittarius and we will have a, uh, and that's its natural home. So there's some big uh, Sagittarian things happen coming at the end of 2018 and in 2019 with the retrogrades there. So we are not nearly done with any of the Sagittarius energy uh, as far as spiritual completion or the issues that might be found there. But, you know, it is much more positive with Jupiter. You'll notice that um, a lot of the harder karmic Saturn issue stuff that's been in Scorpio and been in Sagittarius for the last five years is coming to an end, okay? You're not going to see Saturn retrograde in these areas uh, for two and a half decades, okay? Two and a half decades, okay? And there's no, if you look at the chart, Uranus, okay, it's 40 years away from coming over here, okay? Okay, 40 years away, okay? You're not going to see any of the major outer planets come over on this side pretty much in our lives, right? This is going to take another 80 years to come on this end of the Zodiac up into Virgo. So 80 years from now, we still won't even be in the Libra, Scorpio, or Sag energy. So the real truth is the next two and a half decades really are not about the crazy karmic signs. And, and, I, and, I, and I wanted to put out my little teaser there saying, yes, okay, I get it. There will be a retrograde with, with, with Jupiter and in Scorpio and Venus in Scorpio, but also a retrograde with Jupiter in um, Sag. But I'll be real, after 2019, I mean, you really can't say Sagittarius or Scorpio or any of the issues that you had during these time periods. I mean, we're kind of at the end of the, this cycle. We're at the, it's, I, I, the best way also to describe it is like, there's just no more gasoline in this tank of these issues that we've had for the last five years. We're ready for the new stuff to come on. It's like it's like we're all sitting here at the gates of this Saturn coming ready to come into Capricorn. And with Pluto that's been sitting there for this is where the big show is. This is where the big stuff is. And I think a lot of people are starting to feel that. Realizing that they thought these extremely, uh, very overwhelming, challenging aspects that were going on, right? That were really going on in people's lives over the last five years were the setup to get you to the big stuff, which is coming up here in 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of weirdness in 2023 and then, you know, 2024, bam, you know, Pluto coming in to uh, Aquarium. But there's a lot coming. And... This is the week of completion. I mean, I, this is a very big, powerful week for you to all the issues, all the stuff that's gone on over the last five years. And I'm bridging five years because I truly in my heart as an evolutionary astrologer can connect the last five years to this week. I can connect it in so many different ways. And I, and I, I really think when we look at um, more chart aspects here. So let's see. Um, look at, they changed the app on me now. So it's like flipping through charts now. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So what else do we got that's coming this week? That's big. It's uh, this one, I think is one of the bigger ones. Okay. Um, oh, wow. They really did all this new stuff. Is the new moons coming on the 18th or it depends here in California. It's on the 17th at 1031 PM, but this will be at 131 AM New York time. Okay. Oh, I can't even say <laughs> NYC. Okay. So we have this new moon that's coming this week and talk about endings, talk about completions, talk about coming to a lot of what we're feeling of this ending is a new moon at the 26th degree of Sagittarius and, and it's happening with Saturn at literally the last degree. I mean, with the very, very end, okay? Very end. This is also... You know, the galactic center point here, this 26 to 29 Sag and zero Capricorn we could add in, you know, this galactic center point is pretty intense. So, you know, it's almost um, like there's so many karmic events that are coming together to rocket ship us into our future and rocket ship us into leading us towards the path and why we're here. And if you want to talk like a crazy star seed or you want to talk like a Palladian channel or anybody that deals with you know, starseed energy or indigo children or anybody that knows the reason that they came here for a purpose or there's deeper things that come here is, you know what? This is it. This is why you're here. This is, it, it's come to this moment right here. Like, ah, <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh, woo, right? It's like very, very overwhelming when you start to put all the pieces together and you start to put the strings together. You can go, 
whoa, this is pretty mind blowing now. This person's supposed to be in my life. This project's going on. The, it's like chess. All the pieces are coming together. And that actually brings up, and I don't know why, I don't know why, I, I, I know I did the chart. Um, hold on, I wanna show you guys um, this, this Venus, I'm gonna have to pull it up here. This Mercury Venus retrograde that's going on. Um, so let me sh show everyone, give me one second here. Boom. And we want to send that to paper. Huh. It's so Mercury retrograde. I just finally, uh, you know, updated this iPad and all the apps and the apps, everything's changing. <laughs> it's just like, I can't export to the, to the, app I've been exporting for years just won't won't take it now uh, it's so funny so <laughs> oh. well I'll have to show you guys this way I don't want to waste everyone's time so here we have got this Mercury Venus conjunction happening right which I think is extremely us having this really karmic realization of who are the right people in my life? Is this the right position of the right people? And, and also it's, it's, it's even deeper than that. It goes into, wow, look at the people who did just kind of show up. You know, Mercury is the messenger from the gods, literally. Mercury is Hermes, it's Hermetic. It, it is the messenger from heaven to hell to all aspects. I mean, we literally see so much. But when Mercury is on top of Venus, it's a much more bene benefit aspect. It's so much more positive. There's a very positive aspect to this week, an exciting aspect to the future, the right people. And then also you realizing the other people that, you know, maybe we're just not on the same page or maybe this rocket ship and where I'm going in my future, it's just not aligned with, with these certain things. A lot of that's also coming with this whole Scorpio energy. Look at that. We got Venus and Scorpio. I mean, Mar I mean, the moon in Scorpio in detriment. And so with Mars here and Jupiter here, there's a lot that's looking at our true desires, our wants about the future. And it's interesting that it's happening at the same time that we are going to have the moon in Scorpio, right? So I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that you know, you can have a moon in Scorpio in detriment with all this Scorpio, Jupiter and Mars, right? There's this big, massive volcano happening in the universe of our true desires and wants and our future and where it's going and Mercury retrograding on Venus at the exact same time. It's like, hmm, do I really want that? Do I really want that? Do, do, am, I, am I on that page? Am I on that page in this project? Am I on that, that page in, in this aspect? You know, there's a lot that's coming up to this. And so... This week's a lot about that. Who are the right members of my team? Or is the, what are the universe, who is the universe bringing me in my life that's going to be part of my life in this new journey? Who is the universe bringing for me in my life that is part of, uh, you know, where I'm going and, and are these the right projects? Maybe these are the, you know, this is where you make adjustments. Mercury retrograde is an adjuster. It wants to adjust things. So there's a lot of adjustment aspects that are going on as well. Now, now I can go back to this. So weird. So here we are. Now, I'll, of course, I'll be back next Tuesday, but literally Tuesday is the day next week. So literally a week from today that I'm speaking to you, Saturn, right? will enter into Capricorn, okay? It will move into Capricorn on the 19th, okay? So we are literally less than a week away since I'm talking to you at Tuesday at, you know, <laughs> 10 at night or whatever it is, 8, 8, 8.30 at night. So this is a big week to prepare, okay? This is a big week for you to prepare your future, this is a big week, week for you to make your adjustments. This is a big week for you to look at your desires and your wants and go, this is the boundary lines in, in my future. This is the boundary lines in what I want to do and what I don't want to do and start to set them. 
it's interesting to me, and this is no coincidence, and this might be overlooked by a lot of, you know, people who look at the stars. <laughs> Um, you've got this Mercury, or sorry, this North Node aspect at the exact halfway spot of Leo. Exact. Do you think that's a coincidence? We are halfway through the nodal transit at the exact same time that Saturn is coming uh, into Capricorn. I mean, we are literally at this kind of live or die moment of do we follow our heart or do we do what everybody else wants? You know, these th this South Node aspect is the end of organizations and how we know them, okay? It's the end of how we deal with people. It's the end of even social media. It's the end of, not saying literally, but it's the end in how these things are all done. You know, it's interesting to me, and this kind of is a little bit of a separate topic, but you know, the fact that Mercury and Venus are making a conjunction this week, this also has to deal about money. So this deals with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin a lot. And it also deals with, you know, what are we doing about it or what are we not? How are people on it or what are we doing? Or, you know, this is bringing a lot of messages and I, it, we're not done yet because Mercury and Venus will reconjunct again in the beginning of the year. So anything that happens this week, especially when Mercury and Venus come together, which I think I, uh, what was that, that date? Um, on the 15th. So something, something Friday with this Bitcoin, Bitcoin, stuff and and especially coming Thursday night Friday you're going to see something come up that's going to be have to be rehashed again something dealing with money monetary systems and so forth especially with this mercury retrograde on venus and it, it's of course being so talked about with mercury on top of venus right so that's a big aspect but it's going to be even more interesting to me with the moon in detriment and scorpio dealing with investments and stocks and bonds and all that stuff you know this is definitely dealing with the sec or dealing with um this you know the stock market or dealing with things that have to to deal with more crucially the boundaries that are have to be set by these markets i know it's been talked about so i know it's not something that's fascinatingly crazy but I do think that you could start to see something kind of out of nowhere or maybe people weren't ready for these conversations to go into full effect. Um, you would see something reaching either a peak, especially with all the uh, Scorpio energy yeah, that, that, that's on here while Mercury's retrograde on this, this. You know, it might look like it's going one direction, but you got to remember that Mercury Direct will show us a different direction. When Mer I think it's going to be when Mercury and Venus are in Capricorn. I'd have to do my math, but in my head, that's when it's going to happen. So I'm not telling people to be careful, like live your life, do what you want, but it is a Mercury retrograde. And it is a weird one on Venus, and it is one with a lot of energy in Scorpio. So this is a very peaked out time for, of course, what we see with it. We'll see what happens. I think there's going to be, unfortunately, some weird stuff that starts to happen in that space. Um, I think that it's kind of reaching its astral, <laughs> its cosmic peak. You know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting to see what happens on that front. Um, but mainly, it's getting ready. Mainly, it's, you know, are you in your life willing to start to, you know, truly go forward into this next chapter? Capricorn is really a, a prize. It, 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 it is a sacrifice that must be made. And it is very uncomfortable. So if, if you're not prepared to go off your belief systems because... Sagittarius is not only about what you learn, but it's about your beliefs. Like your beliefs have to be extremely strong coming up here to get through Capricorn because it is those moments when you're on the trail and when it gets tough and when you got to pick yourself up and put some dust on the wound and spit on it, then you got to because you, you believe you're going in the right direction. So you're not so freaked out about it. But if you are somebody who's, you know, more Cancerian, and I'm not speaking literally, and quite possibly I could be too, but, you know, if, you, if you're much more emotionally needing sensitivity and, and, and a lot more security in your life, well, Saturn in Capricorn wants risks. It teaches, you know, it teaches a very harsh lesson of you keep going, you know, it teaches a harsh lesson of, you know, integrity is sticking with the plan. Um, and, and whatever you're reaching for and whatever your visions are, these are dreams coming true. Capricorn makes dreams come true, even though some people might not like it. Um, you know, dreams do come true in Capricorn. You know, dreams are understood in Sagittarius, but they come become real in Capricorn. So Capricorn is an extremely awesome sign, 
But with so much happening to it, it also manifests our belief systems, the good and the bad ones, the ones that we're projecting. So when it comes to your ideologies, especially, and I'm going to bring this up because I'm not afraid to bring it up, your ideologies politically, your ideologies about life, religions, oh, you better maybe kind of clear the slate a little bit and pick the most positive thing that you can in your life because you don't want to come into Capricorn and encapsulate your belief systems or make these belief systems come true, literally, about like, holy crap, this and that, and I believe that this is going down and the world's going to hell and this. When you come into Capricorn, it, it will literally deliver you that. I'm a huge believer, 100% believer, especially when it comes to this whole ideology, belief system thing that's going on right now in life. I believe wholeheartedly that coming up here in this cycle, that the reality that you choose to make it be is go is literally going to come real. Like, and what scares me the most, what scares me the most about this is that the collective right now has this brainwashed ideology. And this is my opinion. This is my opinion. Okay. But this is my opinion as an astrologer. And I know I just said the word, but as somebody who's been an astrologer and is turning more into a cosmic guide, and that's the term I'm coming up with for now, might change, probably will change when Mercury comes direct. But as a cosmic guide, the world has this ideology right now that, that it's going to hell in a handbasket, that we're gonna die any minute, that we're extincting the world. And there are facts to a lot of those things, undeniably, but, Sagittarius is not about fact. It's about beliefs. And it's about do we believe that we will take those facts down the tubes or take them up with us in a better position? It's not a question of whether or not we will ruin the world or die. It's a question if we will believe and make it that way. That's the ideology that is coming up right now. It is ingrained right now in our media cycles, whether you're left or right wing, whether you're in Europe or in America or in Asia, that there is propaganda out there to truly 100% mess with your belief systems. Now, as a, a guide to all of you, I can tell you all, and as we look at this, There is no coincidence to me that this new moon, right? Let's, let's erase this. This looks like horrible. <laughs> all right. And what I'm trying to show you all is this is my main concern. And this is what I think is the big deal here is when you look at this chart. Okay. Oh my, okay. Why do you think the unit, or let's use the media, especially because of the fact that Neptune is making hard squares to this space, okay? When you have, when you have a hard square to Neptune in its natural sign, which deals with the media, all right, it does. Look it up. Do, do, do some work. Do some homework. Neptune in Pisces and Neptune in general is the media. <laughs> it, it is. This is a very powerful position of invisible. It is the great Oz. Okay. Not, not Oz like Australia either from the movie, <laughs> from the Wizard of Oz. When you have it squaring, look at all of this Sagittarius. This week, this new moon, this, this, this weekend, right? Coming into Monday, right before Saturn moves into Capricorn. The day before. Okay? The day before Saturn comes into Capricorn. Do you think it's any irony? Do you, do you think that this is ironic? Don't you think? I don't need no Alanis Morissette for this. There are five. Five planets, the sun and the moon and a new moon, right? The total energy of five energies in Sagittarius dealing with your belief systems the day before. 
This is the universe screaming out loud to get your belief systems in the right, most positive space and send off the best message you can. It's a lot like how we sent Voyager 1 out into space in the 70s with the music of love on it. We, and we sent uh, you know, a record with a bunch of songs from love and all of our language and just a positive message because if aliens did find it, we'd want them to think we were good people. We wouldn't send the Kardashian tapes. We wouldn't send you know, whatever your ideology is of what isn't a human being or not. I'm not gonna say they're not because whatever, that's just what they do. But I was just making a funny analogy. But the whole thing is, are you going to send your own Voyager 1 towards your future into this encapsulation of this new portal and everything that I've brought up over this whole video about a whole new five-year cycle coming, a whole entire new cycle starting with Saturn and more importantly, and multiple other transits that are coming with it. Are you going to send a really positive and optimistic view of the world and a flexible and open view and not letting the facts bring you down, but use them to bridge a more positive understanding of the world and how you can change the world and how you can make it great or not the day before? I mean, come on. I mean, come on, really? I've been doing this stuff way too long. And, you know, you got to laugh when you just see this. I mean, you got to laugh. You got to laugh. You got to laugh when you see one day before, one day. One day before Saturn comes into Capricorn, a new moon, five energies in Sagittarius. Oh, oh, just by the way, Mercury retrograde squaring Neptune. Uh, oh, by the way, Mercury retrograde exactly hitting the nodes. Are we going to listen to the way that the South node, the world wants us to go? Are we going to listen to the collective heart, positivity, inspiration? Not rebellion. And the old, you know, way, I, I, you know, South Node in Aquarius is, you know, getting caught up on not moving into the future, especially during this time. So this is a big, this is a big moment, you know, now I know, yes, I, I said, I, I think of course, the starting of a new cycle is always the biggest, right? And a lot of people always want to focus on that, right? And I, I'm one. I, I, I'm the first to admit, I will focus on the big show first. But sometimes the bigger show is the one that's happening right as the ending of one movie happens. The endings always leave us with the feeling of how it went. And this ending is a dramatic ending this week to a five-year story in your life. A dramatic ending and a dramatic entrance into the next five years. Very dramatic. So, <laughs> it riles me up. I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not, I don't want to say I'm overwhelmed by it, but I actually feel excited because I feel like if I were to be living at any time in the universe, it would be right now. Now, I just put up a video. It's a couple clips from this, this show that I did in Los Angeles and I called it Rising Through the Darkness. And the reason why I did this show was all about helping people to understand the next five years. And I put a teaser out for free to help people understand what it is, what's it about, and, 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 and really, what is it for? Well, the reason why I did this clip is I sh basically prove and show people that the last time we had this amount of planets coming into Capricorn and the way that they're coming, also at the same time, the last time we had Saturn and Pluto conjunct in Capricorn was the Renaissance, and then the time before that was the entrance into the Dark Ages. But with Jupiter in the South Node and everything, or a node in Capricorn, the last time really is 1284. So, you know, what we're about to enter into, especially in 2019, is, the, is something we haven't seen as, you know, in, in cosmically since 8, 1284. 1284. That's a long time. Now, the Pluto Uranus square we saw, okay? Uh, you know, a lot of people were very big about that. Like, we haven't seen this since the 1920s. Or Neptune coming into Pisces, right? I, we haven't seen that since 1848. 
or Pluto and Capricorn. We haven't seen that since the 1770s. But this transit I'm talking about, and the one that's coming up here in 2019, hasn't been seen since 1284, which is coming in 2019. For real. I put that video up. It's on my YouTube. I put it on Facebook. It was surprising. Got a lot of YouTube views. Got like no Facebook views. Usually it's opposite. If you want to watch the whole thing, of course, you can go to inclusiveastrology.com. Find that out. Pay-per-view event. It's actually uh, a stream event. You just stream it. You go into the Facebook group. We give you access to it after you buy it. It's $49.99. And we show you what's going on over the next five years. So if you want to know what's coming up over the next five years, it's six to seven hours long. So definitely take your time to go through it. I go through these next years and prepare people and go backwards and go forward even into the five years after this because you can't truly do a good forecast unless you do the five years before the five years after of the five years in which you are forecasting. So I definitely check that out. I'm going to take a couple questions. Why not? We're here. We're live. We got people in here. I, I need a little sip, some drink. But yeah, also, you know, as I'm looking at questions, check this out, you know, because it's like I go through everything that I can here. I literally put my heart and soul to it. Months of research, did all the math for everyone. 1284, I haven't seen, I, unless somebody can please send me a link on YouTube or something. That, or, or even a, an article of somebody who found all this stuff. I don't know why everybody's not talking about this in the uh, astrology. Uh, you know, I'm going to say it. The astrology community. I don't get it. I don't I don't understand it. Nobody wants to talk about this stuff. Nobody wants to talk about the biggest transit we've ever seen in our life is coming up. Seriously? The biggest transit in our life is coming up. So, to me, that's a big deal. I think that that's a huge deal. I, I, I don't get it. I really... Don't know why everyone's not talking about it. I mean, I'm like looking at it like, oh my gosh, you know, when Pluto Uranus came, everybody talked about that one. That one was a big one, you know, uh, haven't seen it since the 20s. I mean, I, I get it. But I mean, we haven't seen this thing for, since 1284. All right, let's take some of your questions. We're here live in the chat. So um, somebody said Roy Moore. I heard he lost and I'm glad that guy lost. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. I didn't even look at his chart or anything, but I don't believe if you have sexual allegations on you, especially with minors, and there's multiple people coming after you about it, my personal opinion, dude, you should just drop out. Like, you know, that's just my personal opinion. I could care less about what side of the fence he's on as, uh, in, his, in his political aspects, but glad you know the universe the universe is the way that it is the universe puts everybody in the place that it's supposed to be for a meaning and it's obvious that he wasn't supposed to be there unless somehow he won but i don't i don't think he won right <laughs> i better not everybody be like oh gosh this dude won out of nowhere i i've been i've been on this uh i've been trying to focus on this show for the last um out two hours get it ready yeah I, it, he lost Oh, it says he's unwilling to secede. Oh, dude, this dude just does, won't give up. Oh, look, at that's the news. I, I just checked out uh, CNN real quick, and it says that uh, Roy Moore, unwilling to concede Senate race. Wow. Well, I think a lot of it is Mars and Scorpio, you know? It's like the moon's coming into Scorpio right now. Mars is here, you know? It's like greed. It's like just won't give up. People just, you know, again, this is the end of a cycle. It's the end of a week. Some people just won't let it go. You know? Yeah, he didn't win. He lost at least by like 12,000 votes or something from what I see. Well, it's, yeah, it's 99% in. Dude didn't win. Um, okay, so let's see. Can you say more about the Galactic Center and how it's affecting this big cosmic volcano? I guess that's what you said. You said Vulcan? Um, so that's a great question. So the Galactic Center point literally is this area in this spot of the sky that deals with, in my opinion, of course, you could go to the exact degrees of the 27 and 28 degrees of the Zodiac. But in my opinion, it's 29 Sag, zero Capricorn, okay? It's the, the bridge between Capricorn and Sagittarius, okay? 
And this is where the Mayans know. This is where it's pointing towards the center of our galactic plane and our galactic center and understanding. And a lot of how we, especially I think, understand where we're at galactically comes from this direction. So when you have a bunch of planets pile up in this area, especially a planet like Saturn, which deals with our heavy karma, our, our, our karma dealing with past lives and more physically what, it, what it's doing this life, and especially with it being right before Saturn enters into its home sign of Capricorn, it makes it more intense. It makes it kind of like, are you stepping up to the plate to your soul mission this life or not? Um, and so there's a big soul mission being called up. This is the first time it's happening after December 21st of 2012, which was the beginning of the sun's galactic plane shifting or at least moving higher up on the galactic plane. So this is a bigger moment than usual and all the planets are collecting here. It's no coincidence as well that Mercury went retrograde at the exact degree of this galactic plane aspect. So there's a lot to, to say about that. Uh, all the all the energies coming up here, the sun and Saturn are going to conjunct dead degree, zero degree on the cusp of the galactic center um in capricorn sagittarius cusp uh you can't ask for more than that i mean this is the definition of truly your purpose and 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 aligning with it to build a long 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 thing though so it's not like oh my gosh my purpose is this and that's what it will be no this is just the very beginning this is just the very big intro into your life and where it's going and where it's taking you just i mean this is literally just the very beginning of it all so quite exciting on that front um Everybody's talking about Roy Moore. I could only, I, I'll be honest, I could give a crap about Roy Moore or Doug Jones in that Senate race. I'm just, the whole whole political arena, in my opinion, and based off everything, it's already preset for a major redo, both on the Democratic side and the Republican side. Both sides are messed up completely. Our whole political system is atrocious. And that's exactly why all these energies are coming into Capricorn and the biggest since 1284. So um, I could care less who wins, even though personally, I don't think that a molester or anybody accused of sexual aspects should be in office doing their things. I mean, I mean, you know, it is, I mean, we can go into it. Everybody's going to talk about it with Trump or all these things. It's like, Yes, I know. I get it. It's like it's like but this is the whole we need to we need to see it from a third perspective, a third party perspective or a higher perspective and realize, you know, what at the end of the day here, this is all happening for a reason for it to probably be for us to know where not to aim, for us not to know what to be. I mean, we had the we had the whole Tea Party incident, right? This is we're coming up to the Boston Tea Party alignments. Okay? So the whole reason why they raised taxes was because we, you know, uh, basically the people got so mad and crazy the Boston, Boston Tea Party and, 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 and we're starting to rebel about taxes, which started a revolution. I don't think it's any irony that at the same time that we're ending in, uh, entering into the Boston Tea Party alignments, right? So have you guys ever done that? Have you guys ever had some fun with that? I think I did this like a year ago. Um, but like you can look up the Boston Tea Party, right? It was December 16th, 1773, right? So you want to look up, uh, sorry, what was it again? It was December 16th, 773. Yeah. I knew the date. I was close on the date too. I knew we were only a couple days off. So, um, Okay, let's go. So, yeah, see, Pluto, 21 degree, right? So, like, do you think it's ir irony that the tax plan that's coming out, and, and, and this is what's interesting, right? So, like, we could go to, I'm trying to find a middle news source, but you, you, you won't find it. I think, oh, I think I can go on, 
so everybody's like, oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, here, let's go to news, okay? On my iPad here, okay? I think this is what, I was reading this, yeah, and it's off New York Times. Republicans are closing in on a final tax bill, aim for a vote next week, okay? Now, what's interesting about this is they're getting ready to move through with this tax vote. It still has to get approved by the House and the Senate and all that stuff. But it's exactly happening at the same time that taxes were imposed on people in the colonies during the Boston Tea Party, right? And when the Boston Tea Party happened, it literally was the, the event that kind of got rallied up and got people rallied up for the revolution. Now, it's interesting to me that we're having another tax situation come up where people, and I'll be honest with you, I've been hearing nobody's excited for this tax plan. I don't know one person that is, and I own two corporations, okay, people? And I, you'd think I'd be excited about this tax plan, but they are screwing people with the tax plan. You know, they're cutting down the corporate tax, but you are not going to get be able to write anything off, and especially for a Californian like me. It's not the best deal. It's not, especially with no write-offs and stuff like that. I think it's crazy, though, that nobody's nobody's looking at this. I mean, Boston Tea Party, last time the big tax thing happened, and it, I think when this tax thing rolls out and this Pluto, I don't think the tax plan's going to go the way that people want it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, and I think people are going to start revolting about it. I think people are not going to be happy about it, and uh, there's a whole reason behind it. I mean, it's getting the exact mother effing degree pluto comes to 21 degree i think in february i mean i'm just doing this in my head right like you know like i'm pretty sure it's february yeah february 12th there's pluto 21 is March 20th. So I was a month off. I knew I was close, but yeah. So March, it's a Pluto 21 degree in March. Okay. That's the exact alignment in which the Boston Tea Party was, right? Here's the Boston Tea Party. It was also interesting then too. Look at that. Mars was in Capricorn. Mars is coming up to Capricorn soon where it's going to retrograde. Remember it retrogrades in Aquarius and Capricorn. Um, Interesting enough, too, Chiron entered was in Aries. Chiron's entering Aries in 2018. <laughs> oh, man, the Boston Tea Party's coming all over again. Oh, and Saturn was in an Earth sign. And Neptune was in the opposite sign of what you did now. See, it's when you start doing this kind of stuff. This is the stuff I just thrill myself over. I just laugh at this stuff. And Uranus is coming into Taurus. <laughs> In the same year Uranus was in Taurus. <laughs> and that's coming in 2018, too. I cannot make this stuff up. Oh, man. It's hilarious. It's just so funny. Anyway, I'm going to end it on that note. Uh, it was great talking with you all today. Truly appreciate the time, the energy. Uh, Future Life's coming out any second. Uh, you guys want to see a little a taste of it? I'll give you guys a little taste here. This is a. This is just a, a little... Uh, I'm doing it off my cell phone. This is like... Um, I'll give you guys a little taste, all right? So this is direct off my iPhone, all right? So, all right, so let's see here. Oh, where is it? Um, no, 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 okay. All right, yeah, future life, okay? So, of course, it's still gonna have the news feed and stuff, but now it's gonna have protégés and their specialties. So now it'll have horoscopes, Health and wellness, love and relationships, lifestyle, and cards. So when you'll click horoscopes, it'll show the protege of who's on there. There's going to be a lot of new personalities. Of course, I'm going to be the personality. It's This app's done by me, but it's going to be super cool because you'll be able to click that protege, right, and then watch their videos. They'll have their stuff up. You could follow them or not follow them. Choose to unfollow them. Choose to not have them in the feed, right? So when you go to the feed now and you go to the settings, you can only watch horoscopes if you want. If you want to watch health and wellness videos that day, that morning, if you want to watch love and relationships, you want to watch lifestyle, you want to watch some cards, 
you know, it's, it's all going to be about that. This is, of course, the beta version. It's not fully done. Of course, like there's going to be blogs now you can read and uh, get some blog aspects done. We, we've got a lot to fix. Unfortunately, there's still some things uh, that we got to fix. I got to put my video at the front. Um, th you know, this is kind of the beginning of how to get started with it all. And then it will let you all in. So I'm really looking forward to it. You know, future life uh, by, by me. It's going to be really fun, really combining now more than just astro astrology and horoscopes, but going more into giving you a better life with health, wellness, love, relationships, lots of cool card readers, angel card re readers. We're going to be doing events. We're going to be doing speaking events. We're going to be doing live web events. We're going to be doing live stream events. I got a whole new studio moving in January 1st. There's so much coming. It's so exciting. And I'm starting a whole new daily live stream show like this in a whole new studio that I'm building right now, which I will be covering all these crazy stories and all these crazy topics. I'm going to bring, be bringing up all the crazy spiritual topics that people have want to talk about, bringing guests on live. been talking to some awesome people who I'm, I'm going to have, you know, I've been talking to this one person. You guys all know this person too, but I, I want to make them part of this show big time that I'm doing too uh, as a full blown reporter. And we got a lot of cool things coming up. So just keep it here. Keep checking uh, up on my Facebook and keep checking up on the, the current Leo King app now, which will just turn into this future life uh, app very soon. Literally just waiting on a couple last little minor ding, 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 refresh the site and make it look real good. And we got all the talent ready and everybody's really excited. We're just a couple clicks away from this thing. So anyway, Thanks for all your support. Truly appreciate it. Thanks for being a part of that Leo King app, which will be turning into future life. And of course, following me on Facebook, my Instagram. You know, my Instagram could use some love. You know, it's so funny. It's so lopsided. If you guys want, find me on Instagram, The Leo Kingdom. I always post the weirdest stories that I'm doing through the day in my normal life and everything like that. Jokes and weird things that I do. So if you want to watch those stories, God, check me out on my Instagram, uh, The Leo Kingdom. Thanks so much. Truly appreciate it. See you guys all soon. And, uh... Yeah, sending you my best. See you guys all later. The Leo King app is the world's first and leading video and notification astrology horoscope app for iPhone, Android, and computer. Get daily spiritual videos and addictingly accurate notifications alongside weekly sun sign horoscopes, tarot videos, and exciting new age entertainment videos by celebrity astrologer and TV personality David Palmer, The Leo King. Join today. You have nothing to lose with a seven day free trial and wake up to astrology like you've never seen before. Wake up to astrology like you've never seen before.